as an exercise. I think you can do this exercise. It's a crypto exercise. You can see, um, although it's not really that crypto type of problem you did for the quiz, it's a lot simplified version. P is kind of standard notation for the message in a crypto system. Is a 47 in Zmod 49 star. I think I have numbers here, so I'm just going to share it with you. Just focus on the idea. All right, we've, we've done um, 79 star a lot, right? That is prime number in finite field. Here now we're looking at, at Z mod 7 squared star. So, um, so um, let's see. CD with unknowns. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So what I'm attempting to do is the... Um, so P is the secret message, Alice said it, and 5 is everybody knows. So you know, if I want to send a message to Alice, I raise my message to the fifth power and send uh, 47. And if somebody intercept the 47 and uh, try to figure out what P is, not looking at the entire list of 49 in the map, but kind of mathematical description so that we can do it more efficiently. So here's the thing. You know 7 raised to 49 star. Is, this a primit is, is there an element that reaches everywhere here or not? 7 squared, p to the n, big theorem, right? If it's p to the n and odd prime, there is an element, g, right? So we have log g map or not? Select like less than we do. So here's not fp, but z mod 49 star. OK? It has g in there. It generates everything. Therefore, we have nice log g map, not the backward map that I had to create weirdly like that because of that weird thing. So how is this exponent world look like? That's uh, uh, Z mod 48. Z mod 48 is not quite right. Z mod 48 is not quite right. It's the size there, right? What is the size of a Z mod 49 star? 42. 42 is the correct number, right? Phi of 49, right? Which was 6 times 7, remember? So that's the Z mod 42. This is what exponent will look like. So the exponent comes down in here, right? So what is the encryption map here? x raised to fifth power, right? Then you go here by log g map and z mod 42, right? Then who remembers this vertical map here? Five times x. In, in what world? Z mod 42. This is a commutative diagram, right? If you want to find the inverse map here, right? Isn't that what we... So that you figure out inverse so you recover P. That inverse is an inverse map in here, right? That's the, the power of the commutative diagram. So what is this H inverse X? Who remembers the H inverse X? Simply 5 inverse X, right? 5 inverse X. If you can calculate the multiple inverse of 5 and 42, you're done. So what is, you know, 1 over 5 in 42? How do you calculate that? Um, right. But I'm going to cheat. 17. Turns out it's a 17. 5 times 17 is 1 mod 42. That explains, right? So here is that, uh, what are you talking about? 5 times 17 is 1, but it's taking place in mod 42. That's what this is, right? Euclidean algorithm. You calculate that. So we got that, 17. So what is this one here? 17 times x? The same thing, 5 inverse of 17 times. So you figure it out? Inverse map here? What is this inverse map here? Raised to what power? 17x. 17th power. So we got p to the 5. We don't know what p is, but we know if you raise this one, to 17 power, you go back to p, right? So let me write it down over here. All right, here's my argument. x to the fifth is a downward map, right? And upward map is a 17, right? And here's x times a 5 times 17. 
And 5 times 17 mod what is 1? 5 times 17 mod what is 1? So that we go back to 1 here, right? 42. Where did 42 come from? This guy right there, 42. If you raise whatever to the 42nd power, becomes 1, right? So if you subtract a multiple copies of 42 from here, you will reach 1. Therefore, it's 1. So if you raise this guy that you see as a 47, raise that to 17th power, it becomes P again. So if you stick in a P here, fifth power, and raise to 17, and that is, we know 40, this is a 47, right? You raise to 17th power. Modulo what? Forty-nine. The whole thing is forty-nine, not forty-two, right? Forty-two is only for the exponent, so that becomes um, three. Right? In where? C mod forty-nine star. That's right. Star is not necessary here, but just to emphasize everything is taking place in the star. All right. So you receive a forty-seven, right? And you raise to. 17th power, and you recover the message. When this 49 is huge, turns out, um, just knowing this part, and this 49, turns out it's figuring out 17 is almost impossible. That's all our internet security is based on, this difficulty. If this number is huge, and, and everybody knows this 5, but figuring out 17 looks impossible. Therefore, we use it as a crypto system. Whoever created this number, you know this prime factorization structure. Because of that, you can calculate 17. But if I just give you this you know, 6,000 digit number, and not knowing the prime factorization structure, it takes long time, maybe a month, maybe six months. So six months later, change it. That's how the Pentagon does. For one year, they change this key so that if somebody runs 10 supercomputer connected, factor that guy, takes about one year. So they change it in one year. All right, so we're entering actual system, but this gives you a clear idea of you know, the, how the system works. All right, only downside is that we want to use this message P, right? And you want to raise the power. A message could be complicated, and it seems like to make this thing happen, P must come from relatively prime, right? It's not like I have this gigantic, I can choose anything. So you have to create this system of a crypto system carefully so that it hits this relatively prime. So I think that is a little bit inconvenient. And um, they figure out a very nice way to do it. And this is actual current um, crypto, modern crypto system works. Here's a lemma. Let M be P times Q, product of two distinct odd large primes, like 3,000 digit each multiplied by another 3,000 digit. It's about that size. D distinct prime. And if you raise x to the something, then we expect 1, right? That is Euler's theorem. And when x is relatively prime to the modulus. But here's what happened. In z mod m, so I'm going to use this one thing here, the z mod m. Raise the phi of m, if this is relatively prime, you know it's going to be 1, right? But it doesn't matter if it's relatively prime or not. If you raise to that many power, and if you add 1, then it goes back to x. So this seems like the unlocking process, right? If you have some message, and this will tell you how to recover that x back, right? 
So this is theorem. And it, x is not just a relatively prime. OK? So let's look at this quick example. So here's a p raised to the fifth power equals 10. It's happening in z mod 35. Is 35 uh, fitting into p times q? Is that right? 7 times 5 times q. And p is not necessarily um, relatively prime to 35. It might have 5 or 7 in it. So if that's the case, we can't use that Euler's original Euler's theorem, right? So, but it says, what this one says is, let's calculate phi of m. What is phi of m here? 24. 24. All right? So um, here's what happened. You find the 5 is still relatively prime, not p, relatively prime. 5 is relative prime. The key thing is that 5 is relatively prime to what number? Do you know? So that I can kind of change that 5 to 1. And let's go back to the earlier example. 5 was there, right? Different example. 5 was. Uh, Relatively prime to what? So that when you multiply 17, it became 1. But when you raise to 17th power, it became 1 there, right? But, but 5 was relatively prime to what number? So that we could kind of take the inverse. And it was an exponent world, right? Therefore, it was a 42. 5 inverse exists in here because 5 is relatively prime to 42. Right? If this were 2x, it's not going to be invertible. 2 heads not relatively prime to 42. 5 was relatively prime to 42. That's why this was invertible in the exponent world. Exponent world here, because of that, it still works like a 24 mod. 5 is relatively prime to 24, right? OK? So it turns out 5 raised to what power is the correct one? It turns out it's a 5. So I did that in here. Then it is a 24. Is that right? No, it's not 24. It's 25. And this theorem says it doesn't matter if p is um, relatively prime to m or not. You can always use this one. Right? So what is this? p raised to 24. That is our v of m, right? Plus 1. This is kind of reducing that 20, 25 modulo phi of m, that's what this exponent world here is, right? Um, you can replace it with this one because you can reduce it. So here, that says because of this theorem, it's exactly just the p. Right? 24 phi m times k whatever uh, plus 1 is going to be always a p. So if you do that, if you do that 10 raised to the fifth power, so what is the 10 raised to the fifth power? It turns out it's 5. So p was 5. So that's how you're unlocking it. And what's so good about this one? Again, you can use anything. Doesn't matter. You'll be able to reverse it. But if you play with the prime powers and involved in here, not just like p times q, but p to the third times q to the second, and if you try this one, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one map. So you won't be able to reverse it. All right? You see the use of this one? Only difference to that, only advantage they're using is that you can put any message in there, raise it to whatever the power, you will be able to unlock it. All right. Where is the theorem? A lemma. There's a lemma. OK? It's the proof of the lemma. So I was recording. All right, so this is the case is relatively prime. If it's not relatively prime, um, prime p is there, and q is not there. p and q are there, it's a zero. That's what I was saying. Only p is involved. All right, so I think it, 
it's possible that uh, several powers over p is involved if p and q are in a very different size, I think. All right. So if it is difficult, always look at the psi map, right? C mod m going down to z mod p. There's no star in here because we're dealing with a general situation. All right, so I wrote down quickly. This is Chinese remainder theorem map up there, not logarithm or anything. Good. What is the downward map? X raised to what power? This is what we want to prove. So we're going to raise to that much of the power. Is that right? Okay. K times Vm plus 1. About that. And we want to show this is exactly x, right? right? So we start with x, and we raise to this much of the power. And we want to show this is exactly just x. But what we're going to do, we're going to detour like this. right? That's the commutative diagram. So where does that go? x1, x2, right? Raised to the same power, k phi m plus 1, k phi m plus 1. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, why does it get raised to the k? It does not get raised to the We get raised to it later, and he's right. It was just a reducing. Oh. Exactly, just to reduce it. Good point. The horizontal map is just the Chinese remainder theorem. X1, X goes to X1, and X goes to X2. That's what it is, right? Good? Yeah. And the vertical map down there should match, and that's exactly raising it. X raised to k times the phi m plus 1. x2 raised to what? k times the phi m plus 1, raised to the same power. Kind of make sense? Yes? All right. So if you believe the vertical map is this one, then let's assume. What is really x1? Do you know what this x1 is? Because x has here p to the a in it, it's quite simple. What is this x1 here? This number right, you know, reduced down to p. It's a 0. p is in there, right? It's a 0 there. Is that right? All right, x2, whatever that x2 is. OK? So 0 raised to whatever is a 0, isn't it? Let's calculate this one. What, what is the phi of m? Anybody calculate phi of m? m is p times q, right? So is it p minus 1 times q minus 1? Is that right? So let's write it down. x2 raised to what power? k times p minus 1, q minus 1. Is that right? and plus 1. x2 lives in what world? x2 lives in what world here? z mod q? The second component? The z mod q here? Is that right? All right. So x2, we don't know anything about x2. We just know x2 is there in the z mod q. What theorem comes to you? That to, to, so that you can calculate this guy, x2 here. Let me put it this way. I want q minus 1 out there and rest the junk out there like this, and plus 1. x2 and q minus 1 and z mod q, which is better known as fq, right? What is this theorem called? Fermat's theorem. q, q minus 1. So what is this guy here? Well, let me separate it like this, x2, q minus 1, k times p minus 1, times x, 2. Is that right? That's the exponential law. All right. So what is this? Who can calculate this? Or brave enough? 
that part's 1. You know, x to the q minus 1, Fermat's theorem, that says it's 1, right? And we know it's uh, relatively prime to q. That's one thing we have to show, that it has no q in it, right? Only has a p in it, and that's, that's the important part. So let me write that down. Why is x2 is actually in fq star? Why is that so? If you look at x there, it doesn't have q in it, only has a p in it. If it has a q in it, it's 0 already. Right? So. so that's why we can apply the Fermat's theorem here. x2 raised to q minus 1 power. So that whole thing is 1. So 1 raised to k times p minus 1 times x2, first power. So what is it? x2. So here's the summary. You start with x raised to that weird power, k times phi m plus 1. Then you arrive at here. We don't know. But if you go across Chinese remainder theorem, like this x1, x2, and then raise the same power, you arrive at what element? 0, comma, x2, right? So you have to figure out what is it out there that maps down to 0, comma, x2. There was a 0, comma, x2 already, right? And where did that come from? It came from x, right? So x does it, but how do you know x is the only thing that does it? By the activity of Chinese remainder theorem. x went to 0, comma, x2, and we have 0, comma, x2 down there again. It must have come from x. By the activity of Psi, Chinese remainder theorem map. Therefore, that guy went to x. If you raise to k times phi m plus 1, it becomes x using this commutativity. What if, if q is a factor? That is kind of the same. There's, you know, one factor appears than the other factor. If p and q both appears, 0, right? 0 raised to whatever is a 0. Therefore, that, uh, their claim is true. Make sense? All right. Let's let's take the quiz. No, it's cute.